Hello, everyone. We will be talking today about diarrhea, both this cause and next. Diarrheal illness is one of the leading causes of deaths worldwide, accounting for nearly 2.5 million deaths annually. It is most commonly encountered in developing countries, and is a less serious problem in the United States. Can be life-threatening in infants, young children, and elderly people. Most individuals with this illness can be managed as all patient with appropriate medical care. These infections are rarely fatal. The pathogens that cause diarrhea can be transmitted through food, through water, or through person-to-person -person spread. Differences in these modes of transmission reflect differences in the ability of each pathogen to survive in the environment. They also reflect the inoculum size required for a given pathogen to cause disease. Diarrhea illness are composed of acute and chronic diarrhea. The three most common causes of acute infectious diarrhea are bacterial, viral, and antibiotic-associated diarrhea. Chronic diarrhea is commonly caused by parasitic infections. Let's take a look on the next slide. The three most common causes of acute diarrhea are bacterial diarrhea and antibiotic-associated diarrhea. And viral diarrhea. And first, we are going to talk about bacterial diarrhea today. These disorders are usually self-limiting, but can be fatal in infants, elderly people, and people who develop enteric fever. The three most common bacterial causes of acute infectious diarrhea are Salmonella, Shingella. And Campylobacter. Other important bacterial pathogens included Escherichia, Coli, Vibro, Parhemolyticus, Yersinia, Intercolitica. Each of these pathogens has unique life cycle and virulence characteristics. The virus causes acute bacterial diarrhea. Are usually not distinguishable clinically. And diagnosis requires isolations of the organism via a stool culture test. Number eight, case one, a fifty-two year old black woman with rheumatoid arthritis for twenty-four years was admitted to the hospital with complaints of fever and diarrhea for the preceding. For twenty-four hours, one month earlier, she had been hospitalized for neck surgery, and received a ten-day course of a broad-spectrum antibiotic, ceftazidem. She was doing well in rehabilitation hospital until three days prior to admission, when she developed a fever to thirty-eight point nine degrees centigrade, associated with shaking chills and persistent. Severe watery diarrhea, twenty-five to thirty bowel movements per day. Nine. One day before admission, she noted abdominal cramps, nausea, vomiting, and anorexia. Medications, aspirin, and large quantities of antacids. Epidemiology. Her son had brought her an egg sandwich from a famous deli. Which is shared for sixteen hours before onset of their sickness. Her son also have severe diarrhea. Physical examination: temperature thirty nine degree, blood pressure seventy over fifty, pulse rate of a hundred twenty per minute, and respiratory rate at twenty per minute. She was quite ill appearing with dry mucus membranes and a dry fissured tongue. Abdominal exam revealed hyperactive bowel sounds and mild diffuse tenderness. No skin lesions were seen. 
fundings. Y blood cell count of seven thousand one hundred per cubic milliliter, with ten percent polymorphonuclear leukocytes, sixty three percent bands, nineteen percent lymphocytes, blood urea nitrogen of sixty three milligram per deciliter, and serum of creatinine of two point one milligram per deciliter. Methylene blue smear of the stool. Few PMNS and few mononuclear cells. Gram stain, mixed flora, stool culture, Salmonella enteritis. The case summarized the characteristic of the most common bacterial causes of diarrhea. Salmonella. Salmonella is an aerobic gram-negative bacillus. They can grow readily on simple cultural media. It is motile, and the most strains do not ferment lactose. From the clinic standpoint, the simplest nomenclature is to differentiate typhoidal Salmonella from the many non-typhoidal serotype that primarily cause gastroenteritis. As typhi is adopted to humans. And rarely infects other animals. However, the other Salmonella species rarely infect both wild and domestic animals. Organisms attached to epithelial cells in the small intestine and colon, once attached, they inject into host cells specific proteins that cause the formation of large ruffle that surround the bacteria. Internalizing them into large vacuums, their Salmonella are able to replicate and eventually lyse the infected cell, escaping into the extracellular environment, and in some cases gaining entry to bloodstream to cause bacteremia. If it is particularly adept at surviving within cells, it often causes little intestinal. Epithelial damage is little diarrhea, primarily intermesenteric lymph nodes, and the bloodstream to cause classic enteric fever. Ascleritis is also adept in invading the bloodstream. It is the most common causes of non-typhoidal Salmonella bacterial infection. Is in normal volunteers have revealed. The large numbers of bacterial, ten to the four to ten to the eight organisms, are required to produce symptomatic disease. However, epidemiology studies suggested that infection can result from ingestion of two hundred organisms. Stomach acidity kills many Salmonella. Salmonella is acid sensitive. So far, risk factors for disease included anti-acid use, prior antibiotics, reduce competition by normal flora, and depress immune functions. For example, AIDS and transplant patients, sickle cell disease. Because large numbers of Salmonella organisms are required to cause disease, gastroenteritis is almost always associated with the ingestion of heavily contaminated food. Because chickens often excrete Salmonella in their stews, eggs, egg products, and undercooked chicken are the foods. Most commonly associated with the disease, contaminations of processed foods. Examples include ice cream, unpasteurized goat cheese, paprika powdered potato chips, white fish, and contaminated fruits. And vegetables has result in large outbreaks of Salmonella. Pet turtles. Rodents, iguanas. Bird can carry large numbers of organisms, and can infect humans. 
particular young children. Contamination of the water supply with sewage also can lead to gastrointestinal infection. As typhoid is frequently contract from contaminated water, and typhoid fever is most commonly found in developing countries, when sanitation is poor, salmonella infections are more common in the summer months. When the warmer temperatures allow the organism to multiply more readily on contaminated foods. One, we come back to this case. Risk factors for this case included the woman with rheumatoid arthritis, the experience of broad spectrum antibiotic and large quantity of antacids application, and she had eat an egg salad sandwich. These are risk factors of salmonella gastroenteritis. A dysentery, if gram negative Shingala bacillus is normal does not ferment lactose. It grows readily on standard media. The four major serologic groups, A through D, are common to different areas of the world. Group A, Shingala dysentery, and Group D, Asbody, are seldom found in the United States, where the species most commonly encountered are Group B, Asflexinary, and Group D, Estony. Shingala contains a series of surface proteins that induce intestinal epithelial cells and M cells to ingest it. Like Salmonella, the organism injects proteins into host cells, stimulating refolding. Like Salmonella, the phagocytosed Shingala used a surface hemolysing to lyse the Phagosome membrane that escape into the cytoplasm. When the bacterium reaches to the cell periphery, it pushes outward to form membrane projections that can be ingested by adjacent cells, efficiently spreading directly from cell to cell. Shingala produced a cytotoxic Shinga toxin and induced premature cell deaths. This combination of efficient cell-to-cell -cell spray and host-cell destruction produce superficial ulcer in the bowel mucosa and induces an extensive acute inflammatory response that usually prevents entry of Shingala into the bloodstream. It is relatively resistant to acid and it can survive in gastric juices of stomach for several hours. This characteristic explains why ingestion of as few as 200 bacteria can cause disease. The organism first takes up residence in the small intestine. After several days, it is cleared by the small intestine, but then invades the colon, where it caused an intense inflammatory response, forming microabscess and mucosa ulcerations. Because such a low inoculum is required to cause disease, the epidemiology of Shingala is different from that of Salmonella. Shingala has no intermediate animal host. The bacteria reside only in the intestinal tract of humans. The primary mode of spray is person-to-person -person by anal to oral transmission. Foodborne and waterborne outbreaks may also occur as a consequence of fecal contamination. Incidents that are most commonly reported in developing countries where public health standards are poor, toilets can become heavily contaminated by Shingala in tropical areas, spread of Shingala has been attributed to flights. An epidemic of Shingalosis has been reported to 
correlate with highly fly infestations. Bacter gastroenteritis, Campylobacter, a common shaped gram negative rodent, that on microscopic examination are often paired in a distinctive single shape. The life cycle of Campylobacter is not as well defined as the Salmonella and Shingella. It can be ingested by monocytes, where it can be survived within the cell for six to seven days. Endocytosis by intestinal epithelial cells and M cells is also likely to occur. Once intracellular, Campylobacter induces cell death and tissue necrosis leading to ulceration of bowel wall and intense acute inflammation, possibly as a consequence transport by minocytes. Campylobacter can gain entry into the bloodstream. As fetters, subspecies fetters, is particularly adapt at causing bacteremia, often causing little or no diarrhea. This strain's resistance to the bactericidal activity of serum may explain its ability to produce persistent of bacteremia leading to vascular infections, soft tissue abscesses, and meningitis. Manila, Campylobacter is sensitive to acid, and large numbers of organisms, more than 10 to the 4, are therefore required to cause disease. The epidemiology of Campylobacter is similar to that Salmonella. This organism can be also carried in water, raw milk, sheep, cattle, swan, and reptiles. As we observed with Salmonella, infections are more common in the summer month. Coli gastroenteritis. Multiple strains of E. coli can cause their real illness. The strain cannot be easily be distinguished from the non pathogenic strains of E. coli that normally colonize the ball. Being identifies specific O and H antigens. Five pathogenic classes have been defined intratoxigenic, intraaggregative, intrapathogenic, intrahemorrhagic. An interinvasive A. Intertoxigenic ETEC colonize a small ball and produce a cholera like or a heat stable toxin that stimulates secretion of chloride, causing watery diarrhea. These organisms are mostly commonly encountered in developing countries and are contracted from water contaminated with human sewage. These strains are a major cause of travelers' diarrhea. Intra-aggregative EAGGEC adhere in large aggregates to human colonic mucosa and produce a low molecular weight intertoxin that causes watery diarrhea. The diarrhea is often prolonged. The strains are contracted by ingesting contaminated water or food. Interaggregative E. coli are reported in developing countries and are an important cause of travelers' diarrhea. Pathogenic EPEC adhere to the small ball and induce the polymerization of actin filaments to form a pedestal directly beneath the site of bacterial attachment. This process is associated with mild inflammation and usually causes watery diarrhea. The strains are transmitted by contaminated food or water and by person-to-person -person spread in nursery. This disease primarily affects children under the age of three, and it is more common in developing countries. Hemorrhagic EHEC produce viral toxins or shingle-like cytotoxins that inhibit protein synthesis and cause cell death. In certain strains, 
the toxin damage vascular endothelium in the ball and glomeruli, causing hemorrhagic, inflammatory colitis and hemolytic uremic syndrome. The strain most commonly associated with this syndrome is O157 H7. However, other toxin producing serotypes are being identified with increasing frequency. Cattle appear to be primary reservoir and the disease is most commonly associated with ingestion of undercooked, contaminated ground beef. Less commonly, cases have developed after consumption of unpasteurized milk or contaminated apple cider, spinach, lettuce, or commercial mayonnaise. Person-to-person -person spread can occur in daycare centers and nursing homes. This infection is found primarily in industrialized nations and usually occurs during the summer months. Teroinhesive EIEC invade colonic epithelial cells by the same mechanism that Shingala uses. The EIEC strains do not produce toxins, but rather cause an inflammatory colitis that is indistinguishable from that caused by Shingala. These strains require ingestion of a large inoculum, 108 organisms, to cause disease. Outbreaks are rare and are usually associated with contaminated foods in developing countries. V. cholera and V. parahemolyticus, the V. cholera strain gains entry to the small bowl when the host ingests contaminated water, requires 10 to the 3 to 10 to the 6 organism to cause disease or food requires 10 to the 2 to 10 to the 4 organisms. Neutralization of stomach acid lowers the inoculum required to cause disease. The organisms attaches to the small intestine where it produces cholera toxin. This exotoxin binds to a specific receptor that increases cyclic endonacin minophosphate thereby promotes chloride and water secretions. Cholera is able to grow and survive in aquatic environment, particularly in asteroids where it attaches to algae, plankton, and shellfish. During periods when the environment is unfavorable for growth, the organism can convert to a dormant state that can no longer be cultured. The bacteria can also form a rugus, an aggregate of bacteria surrounded by a protective biofilm that blocks killing by chlorine and other disinfectants. This characteristic allows V. cholera to persist in water and shellfish. Fortunately, these strains do not produce cholera toxin and they cause only occasional cases of gastroenteritis. Cholera toxin producing strains are usually found in areas of poor sanitation where fecal contamination of food and water are common. This organism is capable of producing large epidemics or pandemics with major outbreaks frequently taking place in India, Bangladesh, epidemic place have also been reported in Asia, Africa, and Europe. Outbreaks occur in the hot seasons of the year. Vaporeal parahemolyticus diarrhea 
Vibrio parahemolyticus produce an enterotoxin and causes moderate ball inflammation, resulting in mild to moderately severe diarrhea. Clams and oysters that filter large values of water become heavily contaminated with V. parahemolyticus, and the ingestion of raw and undercooked shellfish is primarily cause of human disease. Other forms of inadequately cooked seafood can harbor small numbers of Vibrio, and the tradition of eating uncooked seafood, sushi, explains the high incidence of V. parahemolyticus diarrhea in Japan. Incidence may increase as sushi became more popular. Yersinia gastroenteritis. Yersinia enterocolitica is a gram-negative bacillus that grows aerobically on standard media. Large numbers of organisms must be ingested to cause disease. The organism primarily invades the mucosa of terminal ileum, painful enlargement of the mesenteric nodes as a consequence of right-sided abdominal pain. Yersinia enterocolitis can be mistaken for appendicitis. Yersinia infection is rare in the United States, being more commonly reported in Northern Europe. South America, Africa, and Asia. The disease usually occurs in children. Yersinia enterocolitica is generally contracted from contaminated meat products. And because this bacterium can grow at 4 degrees centigrade, refrigerated meats are particularly concerned. Contamination of pasteurized milk has been associated with several outbreaks in the United States. In contrast with other forms of bacterial diarrhea that peak during the summer months, most cases of Yersinia enterocolitica occur during the winter months. 26. Clinical manifestation. Diarrhea has two main clinical manifestations, gastroenteritis and enteric fever. Gastroenteritis, acute diarrhea, is defined as diarrhea lasting less than 14 days, emphasizing self-limiting nitro of the infections, with the exceptions of certain strains of E. coli and vibrio. Most cases of bacterial diarrhea present with enterocolitis. The incubation periods are 8 to 24 hours for Salmonella, 36 to 72 hours for Shingella, and 4 days for EHEC. Enterocolitis is characterized by diarrhea and abdominal pain. Stools may be frequent but small or, as in previous case 8.1, the diarrhea may be volumes, some patients. Stool may be watery as the consequences of increased secretion of fluids into the bowl. Watery diarrhea is most commonly encountered in ETEC, EPEC, EAGGEC, and vibrial infections. Other patients have prevalent mucosal stools, this lighter form of diarrhea is most commonly encountered in Shingala dysentery, reflecting the exuberant acute inflammatory response of the bowel. Stools may be bloody as a result of bowel ulceration and tissue necrosis. Bloody stools are most commonly encountered in Shingala, Campylobacter, EHEC, and EIEC. Visible blood in the stool is particularly prominent 
with EHEC, often causing the patient to seek for medical attention. Diarrhea virus in volume and consistency. Abdominal exam reveals hyperactive balsams, reflecting increased peristalsis. Diffuse tenderness is typical, usually not accompanied by guarding or rebound. In some cases, however, severe tenderness with rebound may be present, suggesting the diagnosis of acute appendicitis or cholesis titis. The peripheral leukocyte count is often normal, but some patients develop moderate leukocytosis. Fluid loss can be profound, leading to hypertension and electrolytes abnormalities. Positive blood culture can accompany simonella intercolitis, but are rare in Shingala infections. 28. Enteric fever 1. Typhoid fever is most commonly associated with S. typhi and S. paratyphi, caused by Salmonella typhi. S. paratyphi, Campylobacter fetus and Yersinia intercolitica. 2. Fever is the first manifestation, and disease usually mini-curves, and influenza-like illness characterized by continuous frontal headache, generalized aches, malaise, anorexia, and lethargy. A large percentage of patients also have a non-productive cough. Most patients complain of mild abdominal discomfort and constipation, and that is often followed by bloody diarrhea during the second week of the illness. Also during the second week, Fever increases to 40 degrees centigrade, and the patient often becomes severely ill, abdominal pain and distension worsening, and mental status dull. By the third week, in the absence of an antibiotic treatment, a significant percentage of patients recovered, but 10% die of septic shocks or bone perforation. On physical examination, small, 2 mm to 5 mm, rose-colored, macular papular lesions that blanch on pressure develop on the upper abdomen and chest regions in 80% of the patients. Rose spots usually persist for 2 to 4 days. Blood cultures are positive in 90% of patients during the first week and in 50% during the second week. Blood cultures remain positive for many weeks. 29. Diarrhea is defined as loose and watery stools that occur more often than you normally have a bowel movement. It is a common medical problem that everyone experiences from time to time. But it is uncomfortable. In most cases, diarrhea passes within a few days. But there are home treatments that can help ease your symptoms and may, can help you make you feel better. 30. The diagnosis of bacterial diarrhea. 1. Direct examinations of the stool use methylene bloodstream, esthesis, polymorphonuclear, leukocytes, PMN response. Abundant PMNs are seen in Shingala, Campylobacter, and EINC infection. B. Salmonella infections produces moderate PMNs, where S typhi monocytes may be seen. C. PMNs are also seen with amoebic dysentery and Clostridium difficile toxic associated diarrhea. Number 31. 2. A gram sting showing seagull shaped gram negative forms indicates Campylobacter infection. 3. Cultural stools 
using both standard media and Campylobacter selective media. 4. E. coli strains can be identified by slight agglutination test using specific O. Number 32. The treatment of bacterial diarrhea. 1. Most cases of bacterial enterocolitis are self-limiting, usually lasting 3 to 7 days. They may not require antibiotic therapy. 2. Fluid and electrolyte replacement are most important. 3. Avoid agents that slow peristalsis, which is increases the risk of bacteremia and prolonged fever and the carrier state. Number 33. For antibiotic treatment of Salmonella gastroenteritis prolongs the carrier state. However, the prevent complications associated with bacteremia use ciprofloxacin, amoxicillin, and mesoprim, sulfamysoxyl to treat when this disease develops in neonates, people over the age of 15 years old, in a compromised patients or those with prosthetic valves or synthetic vascular grafts. Number five, antibiotic therapy should be continued only for 48 to 72 hours or until the patient no longer has a fever. These are recommended to give her orally. Number 34. 6. To prevent person-to-person -person spread and shorten the course of shingalosis. Trimethoprime, fermesoxyl, ciprofloxacin are usually administered. Number 7. Erythromycin, azithromycin, or ciprofloxacin, shortens in carrier state in Campylobacter jejuni infection. Number 8. Yersinia is not usually treated. However, in severe cases, amesoprine, formesoxol, ciprofloxacin, and citriaxone may be administered. Number 9. Vibrio parahemolyticus usually does not require treatment. 10. Ciprofloxacin for 3 to 5 days shortens the course of traveler's diarrhea. Number 35. Prevention of bacterial diarrhea. Public health measures are the most efficient and cost-effective way of reducing these diseases. By understanding the epidemiology of each pathogen, the public health investigator can track down the source of bacterial contamination and prevent additional cases. After symptomatic disease, Salmonella fecal carriage may continue for an extended period, particularly if the patient received antibiotics. This carriage represents a potential health hazard for food handlers. The carrier state can usually be eradicated by prolonged therapy with amoxicillin. Standard dose for 4 to 6 weeks of fluoroquinolone, ciprofloxacin, standard dose 4 to 6 weeks. Inpatient with gallstones, the carrier state often cannot be eliminated. For individuals visiting areas, Endemic for travelers' diarrhea, unobservable rifamycin, derivative, vaccinating 200 mg orally once or twice daily is protective. Number 37. Antibiotic associated diarrhea develops in up to 30% hospitalized patients. Systemic antibiotics reduce the normal flora and interfere with bacterial breakdown of carbohydrates. The most frequent causative agent is S. difficile. This pathogen has been implicated in 20 to 30 percent of patients with antibiotic-associated diarrhea 
and 50% to 75% of this who develop antibiotic-associated colitis. 38. C. difficile is an obligate anaerobe, spore-forming, gram-positive rod. The organism's name reflects the difficulty of isolating the pathogen on routine media. When the ball flora is exposed to broad-spectrum antibiotics, C. difficile overgrowth and releases to high molecular weight exotoxins toxin A and toxin B, which bind to and kill cells in the ball wall. Death of colonic cells results in the formation of shallow ulcers, an exuberant acute inflammatory response, and the formation of pseudomembranes that are readily seen by colonoscopy. Early lesions are superficial, but as the disease progresses and the toxin levels increase, inflammation can extend through the full thickness of the ball. 39. This disease develops in 10% of patients hospitalized for more than two days. C. difficile diarrhea is rarely encountered in all patients. The incidence of disease is higher in elderly patients and in those who have severe underlying diseases or have undergone gastrointestinal surgeries. An increased incidence is also associated with broad-spectrum antibiotics, anti-cancer, chemotherapy, bowel enemas or stimulants, internal feedings, and those close proximity to other patients with C. difficile diarrhea. Number 40. C. difficile causes a spectrum of disease manifestations from systematic carrier state to feminine colitis. The most common form of systematic disease is diarrhea without colitis. Diarrhea usually begins 5 to 10 days after initiation of antibiotics. However, diarrhea can develop up to 10 weeks after completion of antibiotic therapy. The diarrhea is usually watery, consisting of 5 to 15 bowel movements daily. Pseudomembranes colitis presence with the same symptoms and findings, except that pseudomembranes are seen on colonoscopy and marked second of colonic bowel wall is seen on computed tomography CT scan. Number 41. Severe disease has a high fertility rate. Diarrhea or constipation both possible. These forms of C. difficile induced diarrhea can be difficult to differentiate clinically from the most common form of antibiotic-associated diarrhea. Mosmatic diarrhea, lack of fever, leukocytosis, absence of PMNs in the stool, and improvement when oral intake is reduced, fever, osmotic diarrhea. Diarrhea is usually present. However, some patients develop constipation. Abdominal pain is usually diffuse and severe and can be associated with hypoactive bowel sounds. Abdominal distension and gardening findings of the peritonitis can develop and usually in indicate bowel perforation. Computed tomography scan can reveal toxic megacolon bowel dilatation to more than 7 cm, air fluid levels, bowel wall thickening, and some printing. Arctic elevation in the peripheral WBC count, 25,000 to 35,000 per cubic milliliter, is common. The development of lactic acidosis is usually indicates impending bowel perforation and irreversible 
ball damage that requires immediate surgical intervention. Number forty-two. These forms of C. difficile induced diarrhea can be difficult to differentiate clinically from the most common form of antibiotic-associated diarrhea. Osmotic diarrhea, lack of fever or leukocytosis, absence of PMNs in the stool, an improvement when oral intake is reduced, fever, osmotic diarrhea. Diagnosis: Stool smear demonstrates PMNs in half of cases, and may be heme positive. Stool culture for C. difficile is not recommended. Because this organism is difficult and expensive to isolate, and because culture yields may false positive results, diagnostic laboratories have therefore focused on toxin detection. ELISA kits that detect toxins A and B are now preferred as the initial screening test. They are rapid and less expensive. And they have a comparable specificity, but a lower sensitivity, seventy percent to ninety percent. Many acids detect only toxin A, and fail to detect a small percentage of C difficile strains that exclusively produce toxin B. Endoscopy is usually not required because patients with positive findings. Almost always have a positive toxin test. A significant percentage of patients will have negative findings. However, the presence of pseudomembranes is considered diagnostic. Number forty-three, treatment. A. Whenever possible, the first step should be discontinue with offering antibiotic or antibiotics. In many cases. Patients will fully recover without future intervention. This approach is preferred when symptoms are mild, because it allows the ball to recolonize with competing normal flora and prevents relapse. In contrast, administration of mitralnize. Number forty-three treatment. A. Whenever possible, the first step should be discontinue. The offering antibiotic or antibiotics. In many cases, patients will fully recover without future interventions. This approach is preferred when the symptoms are mild, because it allows the ball to recolonize with competing normal flora, and prevents relapse. In contrast, administrations of metronidazole. Or vancomycin is associated with a 10% to 25% relapse rate. E. Mitronidazole is treatment of choice. Intravenous mitronidazole is also effective, being excreted in bile. C. Using vancomycin only for severe illness because of the risk of superior infection with vancomycin resistant. Intracosi. D. Nitazoxinide comparable to mitronidazole in initial trials. E. Tolivamer bites toxins A and B, but doesn't change ball flora. F. Severe disease may require ball resection. Mortality is thirty to fifty percent. D. Relapse is common because of the residual spores. Retreat with metronidazole. Number forty-four. Prevention. A. Spread by the hospital personnel. Hand washing is critical. B. Limiting clindamycin use may reduce the attack rate. Standard infection control measures may be carefully allowed to prevent hospital personnel. From spreading, C. difficile spreads from patient to patient. Thoroughly hand washing can never be overemphasizing. Prolonged broad-spectrum antibiotics should be avoided whenever possible. Limiting the use of clindamycin has proved effectively 
in reducing the attack rate in severe hospital outbreaks. Number 45, viral diarrhea. 46, viral diarrhea is the most common form of disease, usually causing mild self-limiting watery diarrhea. However, a self-limiting disease that can cause dehydration. Number 47, the disease is caused primarily by four viral groups. Noroviruses rotaviruses, enteric adenoviruses, and astroviruses. Number 48, noroviruses, the single-stranded RNA norovirus belongs to the Callist virus family, a group that derives a name from the distant cup or chalice-like identitations of the viral capsid seen on electron microscopy. Patients present with the acute onset of nausea, vomiting, and water diarrhea. The virus is shed in the stool for 24 to 48 hours after the onset of illness. And it is also is present in high concentrations in vomitis. Infection is transmitted by contaminated water and food and by person-to-person -person spread. In addition to contaminated drinking water, Swimming pools and lakes can transmit it, the disease. Norovirus is relatively resistant to chlorine. Shellfish are a leading food source. And because the virus is relatively heat resistant, cooking contaminated shellfish does not completely eliminate the risk of infection. Infected food handlers contaminated food resulting in large outbreaks. Large outbreaks have also been reported in closed environments such as ships, military bases, hospitals, and nursing homes. Norovirus is more commonly associated with outbreaks in adults, but infants and children may also be infected by this virus or other member of Kelly's virus group. Number 49, rotaviruses, the name rotavirus from the Latin rota, meaning will. For this double-stranded RNA virus is derived from the whale-like appearance of the viral capsid on electron micrographs. It is a member of the real fa virus family. Rotavirus is most common cause of infant diarrhea, and by age 30 years old, more than 90% of children have acquired antibodies. Repeated infections may occur, indicating minimal cross-protection between strains. Adults may also contract the infection, most commonly from infected children, as a consequence of fecal oral transmission. The virus is resistant to hand washing and to many commonly used disinfectants. It is able to survive on surfaces, in water, and on the hands for prolonged periods. In developed countries, infection most commonly occur during the winter months. Number 50, enteric adenoviruses. This double-stranded DNA virus has been associated with diarrhea they are the second most frequent cause of known bacterial gastroenteritis in infants and young children. Infections occur most commonly during the summer months. Number 51. Astroviruses. The single-stranded RNA astroviruses have the appearance of a five- or six-pointed star on the electro micrographs. Astroviruses has been associated with outbreaks of gastroenteritis in children on pediatric wards and in elderly patients in nursing home. Number 52. Let's study this case. A young physician arrived in Tuba City, Arizona, to work in an Indian health service center. Three days later, he became ill with mild middle abdominal cramps 
and worked for diarrhea, but denied fever. He continued working, added additional salt and fluid to his diet, and was inconvenient, not incapacitated, in by his illness. On the third day of symptoms, a stusmia revealed, no PMS, and a bacterial culture grew, no pathogens. Fifty-three. The clinical manifestations of the viral diarrhea vary. At one end of the clinical spectrum, the patient may experience mild watery diarrhea with minimal symptoms, as described in the second case. At other extreme, the patient may develop severe nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, headache, myalgia, the fever. Is to thirty-nine degrees centigrade. Stool smear reveals no leukocytes, and cultures are negative for bacterial pathogens. Identification of the specific viral agent is usually not possible. The infecting agents are most readily identified by their appearance on electron microscopy. These diseases are self-limiting. And last two to six days, depending on the agent. Maintaining hydration is the primary goal of therapy. Number fifty-four, as compared with acute diarrhea, which lasts less than fourteen days, chronic diarrhea is defined as diarrhea lasting more than thirty days. Persistent diarrhea defines a diarrheal illness that lasts. For more than fourteen days, fifty-four, as compared with acute diarrhea, which lasts less than fourteen days, chronic diarrhea is defined as diarrhea lasting more than thirty days. Persistent diarrhea defines a diarrheal illness that lasts for more than fourteen days. Fifty-five, amebiasis can mimic. Bacterial enterocolitis are the parasites, such as Giardia labria, Cryptosporidium, Asospora bedi, and Microsporidium, often present with complaints that mimic viral gastroenteritis. However, in most instances, these parasitic infections are not self-limiting; they persist for prolonged periods. Fifty-six, amoebiosis is caused by intermeba, histolytica, other amoebic species found in the fissures of humans, including intermeba coli. Intermeba dispire do not cause disease in humans. Intermeba, histolytica, trypozoites are large, ten to sixty millimeter in diameter. And contain lucent cytoplasm, a single nucleus, and multiple intracellular granules. Flask-shaped mucosa ulcers may be found in the colon as sites of trypozoan inventions. Ulcers can extend into submucosa and result in invasion of bloodstream. And maybe can also travel up. The portal one, and form abscess in the liver. In addition to its trophozoite form, intermeba histolytica forms dormant cysts under unfavorable environmental conditions. The cyst has a distinctive morphology, consisting of a rounded structure with three or four distinct. Nuclei, figure eight point two. These hardy cysts can remain viable for months outside the host in moist, warm environments. Trophozoites are very sensitive to the acid pH of the stomach. However, cysts readily survive the gastric environments, and the ingestion of single cysts. Can cause active infection. Cysts can be spread from person to person by the fecal-oral route.
by contaminated food and water. In developing countries, a large proportion of the population becomes infected with Entamoeba histolytica, and the infected individuals usually carry the parasite in their stool for 12 months. The risk of amoebiosis is increased by travel to a developing country and is particularly high in individuals who reside in the endemic area for more than one month. Trophozoids attach to specific galactose receptors on host cell and after contact readily kill the host cells. 57. Symptoms depend on the degree of ball invasion. Superficial ball infection is associated with watery diarrhea and no specific gastrointestinal complaints. Invasive intestinal disease presence with gradual onset over one to three weeks of abdominal pain and bloody diarrhea associated with tenesmus and abdominal tenderness. Fever is noted in some patients. Amoebiosis can be mistaken for ulcerative colitis and administration corticosteroids can dramatically worsen the disease and lead to toxic megacolon. Amoebic liver abscess can develop in conjunction with colitis. Patients complain of right upper quadrant pain and can also experience pain referred to the right shoulder. Hepatomegaly is noted in half of all the cases. 58. Stool smear usually demonstrate PMNs. However, because the amoebic trophozoites destroy human PMNs, the numbers are often lower than are seen in patients with shingalosis. In amoebiosis, stools are always hemipositive, reflecting trophozoites, invasion and destruction of the bone mucosa. In acute hepatic disease, alkaline phosphatase may not be elevated, but it rises in chronic hepatic infection. Stool examinations is insensitive. Fecal antigen or PCR is recommended. Serum is anti-amoebic, antibody positive in most patients after one week of symptoms. Abdominal CT scan should be performed in patients with symptoms consistent with hepatic disease. This test readily identifies abscesses. Aspirate from liver abscess shows brownish, sterile, liquid without PMNs, parasite not usually seen, and antigen may not be detected. 59. Treatment. Invasive enterocolitis and hepatic abscess should be treated with oral mitronidazole, 750 mg every 8 hours for 10 days, or tenalizor 2 g daily divided into 3 doses for 3 to 5 days. For asymptomatic 6th excretor, oral adequino 650 mg every 8 hours for 20 days, or pyromycin 25 to 35 mg per kilogram daily, divided into 3 doses for 7 days is recommended. Diloxinide foray, 500 mg orally every 8 hours for 10 days, can be used as an alternative therapy. 60. 1. Giardia exists as trophozoids and dormant cysts. 2. Trophozoids attach to gastrointestinal and decidial cells, causing mild absorption and inflammation. 3. Giardia sits are spread by contaminated water and sometimes food and person-to-person -person contact. 4. Infection occurs worldwide, common in mountainous regions of the United States.
Five, a disease of camper, sterilization of water, critical for prevention, daycare centers, and sexually active homosexuals. Sixty one, about the clinical manifestations, diagnosis, and the treatment of gel diseases. Clinical manifestations are usually mild. The disease is self-limiting, four to six weeks. A. Adults have mild symptoms, abdominal cramps, anorexia, watery diarrhea, nausea, and belching. B. Children have more severe watery diarrhea. C. A chronic malabsorption syndrome can develop, primarily. With immunoglobulin deficiency, sixty-two diagnosis: A. Stool smear shows no polymorphic nuclear leukocytes. Cysts are seen in ninety percent of cases after three stool exams. B. Enzyme-linked immunoabsorbent assay or immunofluorescein antigen are the test of choice. C. Endoscopy are no longer necessary. Treat with mitronidazole. Sixty-three. Chronic diarrheal illness, primarily associated with immunocompromised hosts. Autoinfection can also occur, explaining how ingestion of small members of oocysts can cause severe. Persistent infection in the immunocompromised host, loss of cell-mediated immunity increases the risk of infection, and explains the higher incidence of cryptosporidium, isoprora belli, microsporidium, intestinal disease in AIDS patients. Sixty-four diagnoses can be made by stool smear. A. Cryptosporidium cysts are confirmed by modified kidney acid fasting. B. Azospora belli sporocysts are transparent and acid fast positive. They fluoresce under ultraviolet light. C. Modified trichrome and fluorescence stains are sensitive and specific for microsporidium. Treatment: A. Nitazoxanide for cryptosporidium in children and chronically symptomatic adults. E. Trimethoprim sulfamethoxyl for isoprora belli. C. Formaglin effective for microsporidium.